the story starts with my lifelong friend, Henry. You know, I called him Big H, but his name was Henry, man. I don't know why he had this old this old man name. <laughs> but uh, he started taking interest in the paranormal. Now, he would sit around for hours at a time just reading up on people encounters with the dead and cryptids and all that kind of stuff, right? And his main focus was in rituals. And he'd go on and on about... Like this sequence of events that like you have to follow, usually ending in a scary or a weird little payoff or whatever. Now one day he came across some um kind of potion or something like this man had a real life dang potion made of some like basic little herbs and stuff. But when you took it, it made whoever take it go beyond the normal areas that humans could travel. Now, by this, it meant that the person would fall into a trance where they could be able to talk to the folk who done passed away and those who would never and those who like never were. Now, I was always like open minded to this stuff, simply thinking that, you know, he thought of these like stories, just, you know, stories to read for a cheap little scare, you know, like, and uh, I was starting to enjoy them myself, you know, but now Big H, man, he uh said that we should make this potion ourself now this is when i got a little skeptical you know i thought that it either kill him because you know it was really a poison or mess with his mind and, you know mess his mind up beyond repair but he always just like you know he saw people on youtube making it and taking it so it would stop you know he's like just stop your worrying man yeah because you've seen it on youtube you know yeah they might have mixed it up and then switched it out with some kool-aid like you don't know what mug's doing for real for real man but I went on and gave in and said whatever. And Big A said that um that uh, he wanted me to, you know, be there or whatever. So, like I said, I caved in. And uh, I thought having a friend around while he did it would make it, like, better. So, at least I could take him to the hospital if he started vomiting up some blood, man. Now, the day, uh, like, he was nervous, man. His skin was pale and he was shaking. And he had a cold sweat running down his face. And he just kept saying he was all right, and he had already made the potion. And he called it La Potion de la Verdad, or something like that. And in Spanish, it meant the potion of truth. Now, um, and uh, because he was afraid, he would, like, hallucinate for about five minutes and totally just flip out. We planned for him to take the potion in the forest behind Henry's house to prevent, like, unnecessary drama while his uh, folks was around or whatever. So we came to this like, little secluded part of the forest. Only a few people ever went here. You know, they go there to smoke their little weed and stuff like that. And he drunk the stuff. It was as brown as mud. And, um, you know, and, it, and like the smell was like, you know, weird, man. It's just, just a weird smell, powerful just a powerful, plain smell, if that makes sense. Now, the only way I can explain it is, uh, you know, like, <sighs> it's like, you know, the smell you get, like, if it's, like, blood in your nose or something, you know, it's, I don't know. It's powerful, but at the same time, it ain't like nothing that make you go, you know what I'm saying? Now, he forced down the liquid, and his face got all scrunched up and stuff, and he swallowed it, but just barely. And we sat there in silence for about 10 seconds, and we looked at each other, and Big H shrugged and looked around. And after that, he fell over, he with his eyes still open. And I checked his, you know, checked him and, you know, touched his neck, make sure he was breathing, and I felt his heart and stuff. And everything seemed to be all right, but the thing was, he was, like, passed out. But his eyes were still in shock, and uh, then his heart started beating real fast. So he tried to, like, make a noise or something, but it just came out like... <sighs> now, before he took the thing, he told me to wait 20 minutes before calling the ambulance if anything went wrong. i like, man, you want me to wait a whole 20 minutes to call the ambulance, man? <laughs> like, bro, you can be dead 15 times by then, man. Now, his heart may have been beating fast, but it wasn't, like... Nothing, I ain't never heard sink before, I guess. I guess, like, if you just working out or something. After 10 minutes, of what seemed to be like like he was getting rolled by the witch, you know, getting rolled by the, some folk call it sleep paralysis. But for y'all that like me, y'all know that junk called getting rolled by the witch. Now, he suddenly just snapped up out of it, 
And when he sat up and looked at me, and his ass was wide, and it was tears in the corner of his eyes. And he said, I saw him. I said, you saw, you know, who? And he couldn't bring himself to say nothing. And it wasn't much he could bring himself to answer. So, um, you know, um, it was like more the fact that it wasn't, uh, like, he wasn't really there, like. He couldn't, you know, he wasn't really there to even answer me. You know what I'm saying? And his eyes were still wide, but he wasn't really reacting to me talking to him. And his skin was all crazy looking, and, and his his hands was all wet and sweating and stuff. And after that, the potion, you know, it's still in his system. So I went on and took him to the hospital, and they ran some tests on him. But they say wasn't nothing in his system. <coughs> Excuse me, man. I wasn't that the substance was distracting him from reality it just wasn't enough for big h left in consciousness to respond now i stayed by him by his side it seemed like decades but in reality it was probably around a couple of hours and he finally said something in a weak voice he said hey make it leave make it leave now this is the first words he said in like five hours. So I jumped up and said, "What, what, what, what? What, what you talking about, bro? What you talking about?" And he looked at me, his eyes still looking blank, and he said, "The thing that never was, the thing that never, that never was." And then he passed out and didn't wake up. Now for the next couple of days, they say he was comatose. Uh, he ain't say anything. He ain't move an inch. He just was like wasting away, man. And uh, his, his skin and everything, it was, it was, it, he had some big old, big soup cooler, big pink lips, man. Them must have turned purple or blue. And uh, it just wasn't the same, man. It just looked like he was finna die any second, man. And one change in the room that was clearly felt was the feeling. It turned cold. And not like a chilly cold, but like, like, like somebody just snatched the warmth out that mug. It was like all the heat from the room was being pulled to a certain point in the room. And after a while, it caught my attention. And whenever I look to the cold spot, I get a pit in my stomach like something was like the cold was staring at me like angry or something. You know, when you know you didn't cross the line with a mug, you know, you didn't cross the line with a mug. And you didn't know, man, I'm sitting here turning around, looking behind me, telling y'all this dang story, man. <laughs> so I felt like, you know, like something was mad at me. So eventually my curiosity peaked and I walked over to the spot and put my hand through and what I felt like I could hardly explain that junk. Like my arm tensed it up and started to lose all its warmth. And it was a clear line where my skin tone like turned from like like started my regular little chocolatey caramel color to my little chocolatey caramel color, you know, to like a like it was getting like light man like i'll turn into a white boy or something man and i pulled away but the skin tone didn't change and it still ain't changed and i looked into that little spot of coldness and i saw two small bright red eyes and it didn't stare into my eyes but at the part of me i thought like unreachable by eyes I felt like that thing was searching my whole soul, man. So at this point, I stood up and run it up out the room. And I sat outside the hospital door, curled up against the wall, and I felt the heat from the hospital hallway rush in under the door towards that thing, man. That thing was sucking up all the heat. And I looked through the window of the door, and I seen that dark figure standing over Henry. And it was still, like, translucent, but it had, like, a physical presence in this world. And it had long, gangly arms and legs, and it was hunched over, and the chest was all skinny. And uh, the face was long, but it was caved in, with the ears pulled back like some kind of uh, dog or something, man. And the most noticeable feature about the thing was it had a whole bunch of mouthfuls up on it, with rows of sharp teeth all around its chest. And they was open and snarling. Blah, 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 blah. And what happened next, I couldn't believe, man. As that thing got more and more clear, it started to suck out what seemed to be like some white juice up out of Henry. Like that thing was sucking the juice up out of him, man. 
And it looked like an eternity of me staring at this thing. And that little white thing didn't no longer come up out of Henry. But his head turned to one side in the air. Just I saw it. I saw that moment, man. Big H died, bro. I saw the moment. That thing killed my boy, man. And now it was solid. And um, it let out this big scream. And it turned and looked at me. And our eyes met each other, and I stood there. I'm paralyzed, boy, paralyzed, man. And it was only like a moment, but it'd be something that I'd never, of course, this something I'd, I'd never forget. I ain't got to tell y'all. Y'all already know this is something I'd never forget. Shoot, I'd never forget my first kiss. i never forget, you know, lunch in high school every day. I remember lunch every, I remember every lunch. So, you know, I ain't going to forget this. Shoot, you know. But after that, man, it, like, jumped out, the, just jumped through the window, man. And it was gone, and Big H was dead, man. And, um, when, when, like, when Henry, when he went to where the living was not supposed to go, a spirit then came back and followed him back. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, I, I I don't know, man. I can't even explain it. And this thing, only I guess, got to take the souls of folks who live it. And it's like it ain't even like it's evil necessarily, but like what draw it to do this is it seems like it's just like his natural instincts to put into every living. Like it's just trying to survive. And because of Henry, he didn't let this dang thing. Into the world, man. It's hard enough with all the stuff we got to deal with. Now we got to deal with smush-faced, soul-sucking demon, man. <laughs>